All right, who loves evaluation? Why did it get so quiet? <laughs> I hope to get you to change your outlook and develop a love for evaluation, but I have to start with a little, what I call, perspective setting. I like to do that in all of my training sessions. I've been a Toastmaster for a while. The district knows I like to run my mouth, and they give me a couple of opportunities to do so. Johnny knows too. <laughs> Thanks for agreeing. In the course of my trials in teaching, I've been able to develop a series of speeches called Make It a Big Deal. And your next meeting is a big deal. It is the next thing that's on your calendar every time. We don't think about regular meetings. We think about scheduled meetings. Regular should be something when we're talking about bowels. All right? Yep. Not good. <laughs> In doing your part, which is one of the subsets of that evaluation, I'd like to talk today about what I think is the most important portion. Now, if you had to pick a portion of a meeting, since a meeting is so important, what part of that meeting would you think is most important? Spaces. Spaces? Evaluation. Speeches. Evaluation. Speeches. The speeches. I fell for that one. Okay. <laughs> Evaluations. Evaluations. It's good that if evaluations are on the program, that should be the important part. <laughs> However, I did fall for speeches being the draw. At Herzing College, I, there's a couple Woo! of members here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we call ourselves the Comeback Club because when we started in 2004 with our renewal effort, I attended the first meeting as such, and there was less than one member there. <laughs> How do you do less than one member? Explain. The student life director was there, not a Toastmaster. I was there. I was not yet a Herzing Toastmaster. Yolanda Berta, coach, coach chair, was there. She was not a Herzing Toastmaster. We were having a Toastmasters meeting. There were no Herzing Toastmasters there. But there were some. It was a meeting. It wasn't zero. It wasn't one. Less than one. That's how it happened. I talked to members, well, would-be members, in those subsequent meetings when we were trying to get people to put their names on the dotted line and join our little club. After the meeting, I would ask, what did you think about that meeting? Weren't the speeches great? And they would say, yes, but, and I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. What about table topics? Table topics is fun. It's kind of like a quiz show, right? And they'd say, well, yes, I, if I would have just shut up, and let them tell me what dazzled them about a Toastmasters meeting. One person broke through my banter and said, your evaluation. You see, an evaluation shows other people that they can be great speakers. A great speech just shows off of one person. I submit to you that evaluations go to the next slide, are key. Many new members join our club and other clubs, or they will, because of insightful evaluations. Encouraging, yet insightful and useful evaluations. The speeches are not always the draw. Next slide. Evaluators, I want you to be like your favorite teacher. Audience members, I want you to be fanatic about the cause of evaluation. That's you doing your part. And your evaluator assistants, I want you to be fanatic about being your best so that this is something to brag about as a part of a meeting session. Who's ready for a pop quiz? <laughs> Everyone's always ready for a pop quiz. What is this? <laughs> All right, that's one correct. Now, examine carefully again. What is this? Shiny red apple. A shiny apple. I want an evaluator to be like the favorite teacher, to be the teacher that deserves that shiny apple. Think back, around third to sixth grade, who was that teacher that inspired you to want to learn, to do more, to go dig up worms for that science project, <laughs> to do that three panel board at two o'clock in the morning when you know you should have worked on it the week before? That teacher, that's who I want you to be. As such, I'd like for the general evaluator to explain, to stress, that this feedback session is crucial. 
It is the crucial part of the vehicle in how we deliver Toastmasters training. Introduce each assistant like a dignitary, a visiting professor. This isn't someone who just signed up a week ago who's going to give an evaluation. Do you have your form? No. That's not an evaluator. An evaluator is someone who's going to take you to the next level. Thank you very much. Next slide. As such, evaluators and assistants in your role should give earnest praise and honest feedback, not whitewash. Has anyone ever been to the church when the Sunbeam Choir was singing? The little kids, they are adorable. They don't all sing that well. It's okay. It's fine. They're three. By rule, you have to be an adult to join Toastmasters. We don't whitewash. We're not going to tell you that everything is great. But there's a way to say everything. You'll have your chance to show me that you can do this. That you can give not so great news in a way that gives positive push, positive growth, positive direction. And then when someone does great, what do we do? Okay, I was about to say, am I in the wrong room? We're the encouragement organization. We always look for opportunities to applaud. So there's nothing wrong with telling someone how they do well. In fact, evaluations, we sometimes forget that aspect because we think about nitpicking on the bad stuff. Now, here's your part of the exercise, or at least the first part. Lead applause whenever possible. I tell people all the time. If I'm in a weird place and I need to find a Toastmasters meeting that has started, I listen for applause. <laughs> That's how I find the place. I go to a lot of meetings that happen in churches. In the lower levels of the church, it becomes a labyrinth. It's like a maze. Listen for the applause. It will lead you to the light that is the meaning as Toastmasters. Your part, I want you to practice. And I need raucous applause. I don't need, oh. I need your baby is in the front row soloing in that Sunday choir applause. And I need it down. Now, how much effort did you expend in doing that? Did anyone even have to leave their seats, although I wouldn't discourage it? I told you to applaud, but right now I feel a tingle. And I knew it was coming. Applause makes you feel good. It requires minimal effort. Slap your hands together a couple of times. But it shows maximum appreciation. And it also makes people wondering outside, what in the world's going on in there? That's you doing your part. As the evaluator, you should be looking for opportunities to lead that applause. Next slide. As audience members in this talk show, behave like you're at your favorite talk show. Oprah, Geraldo, it doesn't matter to me. Whatever it is, there's no place on this planet that you would rather be than at this evaluation session. So act like it. Eyes to the front. At every opportunity, you nudge. You say, man. Is she good or what? I can't wait till I get up there next week. I'm going to at least try to be half as good. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be better. Tell people how glad you are to be there. Or if you can't be, tell them why you just hate that you can. Next slide. Ask a visitor, somewhat coercively, but ask a visitor, you're going to be here next week. Don't ask them, are you going to be here next week? No, 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 no. You're going to be here next week.